Oral questions, question oral. The Honourable Member for Thornhill. Speaker, Canadians learned yesterday that the Bank of Canada is raising interest rates for the ninth time since last year. This comes thanks to the Prime Minister's out-of-control spending that's driving up the cost of goods, the goods that we buy and the interest that we pay. Half of all mortgage holders were already struggling to make payments, and that was before the bank's announcement. So simple question. The Department of Finance knows this number, and the government refuses to share it. Can the Finance Minister tell us how much families will now pay for their mortgage because of her inflationary spending? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary ourselves to our economic peers. We have a lower deficit. We have a lower net debt to GDP ratio. We have the fastest growing economic growth in the G7. We even have lower interest rates. This is what is allowing us to invest in things like dental care, child care, health care, affordability, economic growth and jobs. Over 900,000 jobs created since the pandemic. Yes, global inflation is hard, but we will get through this by working together. Well, member for Thornhill. Say everything's fine. They either don't know the number or they won't tell us. Well, I'll tell you, it's $4,000 wow. a month for an average mortgage payment. Wow. After eight years of this Liberal government, consumer debt is the highest it's ever been. Canadians carry more debt than our entire GDP. The Prime Minister told us that interest rates would stay low. He promised that he would take on debt so Canadians didn't have to. Canadians need some certainty. They need to pay, pay their bills. How many Canadians will have to lose their homes before they notice something's wrong? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, over the last week, the Conservative Party have tried to convince Canadians that we would be better off if we didn't make those investments in health care, if we didn't invest in dental care, if we reduced investments in seniors' pensions and retirement security. They want to get rid of the CBC. They don't want to attack climate change. Canada has the highest economic growth and the lowest deficit in the G7. We are able to invest in making life more affordable for Canadians. Our government is up to this challenge, Mr. Speaker, and you know what? So are Canadians. The Honourable Member for Thornhill. Mr. Speaker, it's clear they don't want to talk about the economy. I understand why. But we just learned that David Johnson fired the crisis communication firm he hired for strategic advice. It turns out that the same firm worked for the member for Don Valley North, who has been asked to leave the caucus amid allegations of foreign interference. David Johnson exonerated that member without even talking to him. There is conflict of interest and then there's this. What the hell is going on? Before we go to the, uh, the Minister for Public Safety, I just want to remind the Honourable Members, parliamentary language is something that we want to respect as much as possible. I understand we get emotional and it slips out on us sometimes, but I'll let the uh, Honourable Minister answer now. Order, order, order. Very good. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, it's shocking but not surprising at this stage that the Conservatives continue to focus on Mr. Johnston, somebody who was appointed by a former Conservative Prime Minister in Stephen Harper, someone uh, who did much work under the last Conservative government and despite all of that uh, would rather focus on partisan attacks than the actual hard work of fighting foreign interference together. Now, Mr. Johnston has laid forward a path where we can engage Canadians to ensure that our national security establishment has all of the tools that that are necessary to protect Canadians. And rather than continue on with these partisan attacks, the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada should take the briefing. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Mr. Speaker, yesterday evening, hundreds of thousands of families in Quebec and throughout Canada had a very difficult conversation to have. The question was as follows. Are we going to be able to keep our home? Why was this conversation necessary? Because in a year, the overnight rate was increased by uh, for the ninth time. The Government of Canada clearly stated payment, house payments will go up by 40%. The Government could do one thing to reduce inflation, is to control expenditures. Why is it not doing so? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And my Honourable colleague refers to what happened yesterday evening during those difficult conversations around the dinner table, the, lead, the Conservative leader spoke for four hours 
circuitously he spoke, he spoke about Henry VIII, the difference between copper coins and silver coins. He talked about iPads, Mr. Speaker, but I heard nothing about an economic plan for Canada. 271 days, has, that is how long he has been here as leader, and he's got nothing tangible to offer Canadians. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Mr. Speaker, my colleague has very selective memory because the Conservative leader very clearly stated that the government has to do two things, not create new taxes, and especially the government needs a plan to reduce spending in order to reach a balanced budget. He could reach a balanced budget to follow what the Deputy Prime Minister said because she said the deficits through, through oil on the inflationary fire. Does the Deputy Prime Minister still agree with herself that we have to control spending? Does she still agree with herself that we need a balanced budget? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr Speaker, let us talk about ba balance. We found balance between fiscal responsibility and compassion. What the Conservatives propose is pure austerity and cuts. Our government is offering a new reimbursement for groceries, new subsidy for dental care. Our government offers benefits for low-income workers in Canada, Mr. Speaker, to support them and to help them. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives want to hear nothing of this. They do not want to help Canadians. Mr. Speaker, by the way, we are doing this with the lowest deficit in G7 countries. The Honourable Member for Bailey Chambly. Mr. Speaker, there are forest fires throughout Quebec, 11 times more than the past 10 years on average, 3 million hectares, and we're only in June. When it comes to wildfire season, we can associate droughts to climate change. We can associate climate change to oil and gas extraction. Does the Prime Minister agree that hydrocarbons are behind forest fires? The Honourable Minister for the Environment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the leader of the Bloc Québécois for that question. We do agree. We have to do more to fight against climate change. There is an undeniable link between wildfire season and the use of fossil fuels. We have to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. That is the reason for which we will support the motion that the Bloc Québécois has put forth today in the House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for belle Well, It seems that we've gone back in time by 10 years. Well, in any case, Mr. S Mr. Speaker, no one serious believes that oil and gas is the only cause behind what is happening throughout the world. But it's clear, it's more and more clear that this oil and gas obsession has a high price. Does the Prime Minister agree to end all direct or indirect funding for oil and gas companies and the save money? Will it be sent to Quebec and provinces in order to increase funding in researching, uh, in research on how to fight against climate, climate change, especially when it comes to municipal infrastructure? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and once again, I'd like to thank the leader of the Bloc Québécois for his question. I think that we can walk and chew gum at the same time. We won't wait to eliminate subsidies before investing massively in public transit, in the electrification of transport, in clean technology. And that is what we did in the last budget, and the Conservatives voted against vehemently. When they say they believe in technology, but when we want to invest in technology, they say, no, 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 we must not invest in technology. I'd like to thank the Bloc for his question, for their question. We will work with them on this important question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. De Rosemont, la petite... The Honourable Member for Rosemont La Petite Patrie. Mr. Speaker, have you seen the images, the pictures of uh, the Statue of Liberty completely enveloped in Quebec forest fire smoke? Hundreds of millions of people in, this, in the United States are under air quality warning. At the end of Wednesday in New York, the scale of zero to 500 was nearly broken at 413. Climate change has no borders. What will it take for this government to finally start talking and acting? 
The Honourable Minister for the Environment. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I would like to remind my honourable colleague that it is with the collaboration of his party that we are eliminating subsidies for fossil fuels in this beautiful country, Canada. We eliminated international subsidies last year, and we have been commended by NGOs as an uh, example to follow. International organizations like All Change International are also saying that when it comes to eliminating fossil fuel subsidies internationally, there are two leaders in the world, the United Kingdom and Canada. The United Kingdom and Canada. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Rosemont La Petite Patrie. It would be a bit more credible if the Liberals hadn't bought Trans Mountain and signed for Baie du Nord. The Liberals seem to say that everything is fine under the sun, but we can't see the sun because there's smoke in the air. It's more, more and more difficult for Liberals to pretend that everything's fine when the country is burning. Since 2015, the Canada airplanes aren't even built in Canada, where we now have to borrow them from foreign countries. This, this country is not ready to face various crises. When will the government finally end subsidies to use the money to invest in renewable energies? The Honourable Minister. The answer is very simple, Mr. Speaker. We are already doing so. We are investing more than $200 billion in clean technologies in fighting climate change, which is half of what the United States is doing, a country that's 10 times our size. I agree with my honourable colleague. We have to do more. We have to go faster when it comes to fighting climate change. And when it comes to adapting to climate change, and that is exactly what we're doing on this side of the House, Mr. Speaker. Well, member for Calgary, Forest Lawn. The IMF reports Canadians have the most indebted households in the G7, with a mortgage default crisis looming. Out of control, Liberal spending gave Canadians nine bank interest rate hikes in a year. Former Liberal Finance Minister John Manley said the out of control spending by the Liberals is like pressing the gas, while the Bank of Canada is trying to slam on the brakes with their interest rate hikes. Adding another $60 billion of fuel on that inflationary fire isn't going to help anybody. Will the Prime Minister cancel? his tanning plans this summer, get to work in this house and rewrite his budget so Canadians don't lose their house. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, in fact, inflation is coming down. It peaked at 8.1 percent. It is now 4.4 percent. That is better than the United States, the Europe, the OECD. It is actually projected to continue coming down to uh, below 3 percent very soon. Uh, it's still too high, but that's why we're investing in affordability. We've lifted 2.7 million Canadians out of poverty. We've created more than 900,000 jobs. In fact, through the workers' benefit, more than 4.2 million Canadians are taking home bigger paychecks. All of this while maintaining the highest economic growth in the G7 and the lowest deficit, Mr. Speaker. Here, here. Member for Calgary, Forest Lawn. Mr. Speaker, Conservatives will continue to fight the Liberal NDP government from putting another $4,200 of debt on the struggling backs of Canadians. Yeah. And Liberals' out-of-control spending gave Canadians the highest inflation seen in 40 years, and that made interest rates go up. Majority of Canadians are only $200 away from insolvency. Any more rate hikes are going to be crippling. This budget will turn Canada into a nation of inflation and higher debt. Will the Prime Minister end his surf trips, end the phony celebrity tours, and rewrite this failed budget so Canadians can keep their homes this summer? Yes. The Honourable Government House Leader. Global inflation uh, reared its head. Uh, the Conservative leader had a solution. It was to invest in cryptocurrency. If Canadians had followed that advice, and sadly many did, uh, they not only would have it been reduced, if they invested in Terra or Celsius or FTX. Sorry, it started, it started a couple of questions ago, and I think it's more people talking to each other. So I'm going to ask them, if you're speaking with each other, please whisper. And if you're more than one seat away from someone, maybe just move over and talk to them. At a lower pace, not so loudly. Okay? See how I'm speaking? I want everybody to talk to each other if they're not answering or asking questions. The Honourable Government House Leader, uh, well, you've got about 25 seconds. So, Mr. Speaker, if that advice wasn't bad enough, well, they got something new. It doesn't matter that Canada is lower than the OECD in terms of its average on inflation, lower than the Eurozone, lower than the G7, lower than the United States, lower than the UK. It doesn't matter that we have one of the lowest inflation rates in the world. They want to solve global inflation by slashing supports to Canadians. They think they can fix global inflation by getting rid of dental care, getting rid of childcare. 
welfare by attacking the most vulnerable. Mr. Speaker, not only will it work, it's shameful. The Honourable Member for Northumberland, Peterborough South. Mr. Speaker, Canada is supposed to be a place of prosperity, hope and opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yet for far too many Canadians, it's become a place where they can no longer afford to work, to live and to thrive. Sure. Earlier this year, the finance minister admitted that her Liberal deficits were driving inflation. Still, they added $60 billion of inflationary fuel on the cost of living fire. We know that deficits lead to inflation, inflation leads to interest hikes, and interest hikes lead to mortgage defaults. So my question, Mr. Speaker, how many Canadians will lose their homes before this Prime Minister learns his lesson? <laughs> The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, yesterday the member opposite said that Ireland is the place to be, that it's, that, it's, that it's the greatest country right now. Well, Mr. Speaker, I would say that the facts show that this is the greatest country on earth. This is the place where we're leading growth and change, where we're transforming to the economy of the future, where we're building the jobs of the future, where we're making sure that we have a future for our country. We love this country. Well, they idolize others. We stand for this country, Mr. Speaker. of order during question period. You'll have to wait till it's over. Noon. The Honourable Member for Northumberland, the Peterborough South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I must have misheard because he said he admired Canada. I heard the Prime Minister say he admired the basic dictatorship of China. Yeah. food banks in Coburg, I think it's about two hours from his riding, and see the children lining up outside the Shame. food bank. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame. Life has never been better. That's all we hear. That's not the truth. Go to the food banks. See the double and triple use. See Canadian suffering. Mr. Speaker, we know that deficits lead to inflation, which leads to housing defaults, which says how much longer till this Prime Minister learns his lesson, stops his inflationary deficit spending, and puts an end <laughs> I just want to remind the honourable members to place their comments or their questions through the chair, not at the chair. The honourable uh, minister for families. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, unfortunately, what Canadians know is that the conservative way of doing things is throwing up their hands, sitting down, and say, "Let's do nothing." Actually, no. Let's cut. That's the conservative way of doing things. Let's cut the Canada Child Benefit. Let's cut the thousands of dollars that Canadian families are saving when it comes to childcare. Let's cut the grocery rebate that we're giving to Canadians. Let's cut the Canada worker benefit. Mr. Speaker, on this side of the aisle, we actually believe in investing in Canadians. And the facts speak for themselves. 2.7 million fewer Canadians living in poverty, including 635,000 children, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Portneuf, Jacques Cartier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Since January 2022, interest rates have risen nine times. Everything costs more. Groceries, heating your water, and now that leads to a cold shower, another increase in mortgages. Families are having to cut back on food to survive and continue to pay for their homes, which are their main assets. The Liberals told them, when rates are low, it's time to borrow. What a great piece of advice, Mr. Speaker. What does the Prime Minister have to say to these many families that are simply trying to make ends meet? The Honourable Minister for Sports. Mr. Speaker, on this side of the House, when times are tough, when we know that our constituents are finding it hard, we roll up our sleeves and we double down to help them. These are the same people that the Conservatives want to abandon by cutting help for families when it comes to childcare, when it comes to dental care, when it comes to uh, low-income workers. Mr. Speaker, on this side of the House, we'll continue to be here for Canadians whilst being responsible fiscally speaking. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Bonneuf, Jacques Cartier. 
We're not the ones who abandoned Canadians, it's the Liberals that have abandoned Canadians. They need to wake up a little. Mr. Speaker, when a mortgage increases by $2,000 a month, is it realistic for a family to get through this situation? The answer is no. The government has been wholly irresponsible, and now Canadians are footing the bill. The Bank of Canada said it. Your policy is causing inflation. It's sad to read in the paper this morning a mother from Quebec City who said, basically, our house is strangling us. What does the Liberal government say to this mother, to this family? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, the reality is that a family from Quebec will receive $1,400 more with the doubling of the GST credit. But unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, with the austerity plan from the Conservatives, these families won't be able to get this money. I would also like to uh, note, Mr. Speaker, that inflation has gone down in Canada from its peak of 8.1% to 4.4% now, and that yesterday the Bank of Canada stated that it expects inflation to continue to go down to 3% this summer. Difficult times are now, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. The Honourable Member for Repentigny. Mr. Speaker, more than 11,000 Quebecers were evacuated this morning because of the forest fires. Everyone else has also felt the impact of the fires, if only by breathing the ambient air. We're right in the middle of climate change, Mr. Speaker. We have a duty to support those who have been affected, but we also owe it to them to be consistent. Mr. Speaker, the oil and gas sector is the main accelerator of climate change. We have to get out of it. We have to divest. We have no choice. So seeing as we have to divest, will the government finally commit to banning all new oil projects and putting an end to the search for deposits? The Honourable Minister for the Environment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for her question and for her activism on the issue of climate change. I'd like to reassure her. We created a carbon tax, one of the most ambitious carbon taxes in the world, to tackle climate change. We're tackling climate change by adopting a zero emission bill so that there are only zero emission vehicles on our roads eventually. We are investing record amounts, $30 billion by 2030, Mr. Speaker, in public transit. We're tackling climate change by implementing a cap on greenhouse gases. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Repentigny. No, I understand, but the government keeps saying again and again that it could speed up the fight against climate change if it didn't have to fight the Conservatives. This is true, but it would go even much faster if it stopped imitating the Conservatives. Not only is the government refusing to divest from the oil business, they're even looking for new deposits at the bottom of marine shelters. That's what the government is allowing BP to do off the coast of Newfoundland. What's worse, according to Radio Canada, the Minister for Natural Resources stated that if BP were to find oil, then the government could help them exploit it by redrawing this, this protected zone. Will the Minister for the Environment immediately correct his colleague? The Honourable... The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, we've already spoken about this, and I would like to repeat this. These are only exploration permits and not production permits. It is very important to determine the difference. Such a permit has never been proposed for a uh, protected zone, and this project would likely be rejected. I would like to talk about the work that we're doing right now, Mr. Speaker, with Bill C-49. Through this bill, we will develop new renewable energy projects like wind energy in the Maritimes. The Honourable Member for Avignon La Métis, Matin Matapédia. Mr. Speaker, it's no longer enough to blame the opposition. It's no, it's no longer enough to have a contest of the least worst. It's not the Conservatives who are authorising oil exploration in Newfoundland. It's the government. It's not the Conservatives who are talking about redrawing the boundaries of a mar marine sanctuary to extract oil. It's the government. Mr. Speaker, let us get out of the blame game and look at what else we can actually do. We need to get away from hydrocarbons. Everyone knows that. So is the government going to make a gesture as concrete as it is symbolic and announce that oil drilling in marine sanctuaries is finished? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Once again, when we came to government, there was only one zone that was protected. 
Now we're up to 14% from 1% and we are going to reach 30% by 2030. We'll continue to undertake this work and we will continue to make investments in renewable energies. And it's, ex it's exactly what we did, we'll build C49. This will give new opportunities for renewable energy in the Atlantic provinces. Member for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes. The Prime Minister's rapporteur was paying the same crisis communications firm as the member for Don Valley North. Wow. That's the former Liberal member who left caucus because of the same scandal the rapporteur was supposed to be investigating. And in a surprise to no one, the rapporteur exonerated the former Liberal MP. With all of these conflicts of interest, will the Liberals recognize the damage that they're doing and call a public inquiry today? The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, on and on the Conservatives go about Mr. Johnston, who was appointed by Stephen Harper. They now ap appear to disagree with their former Conservative leader. Uh, they disagree with the member for Durham, who took a briefing from the service to ensure that we can do the work of protecting the people that work in our democratic institutions. And in fact, the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada disagrees with himself, who said that Mr. Johnston was one of the most credible individuals who has the most integrity in this country. He's now reversed himself on this. He should do so again and rally around the cause of protecting our democratic institutions from foreign interference. This is not a partisan issue. The Honourable Member for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. Speaker, it seems to be a comprehension issue for the Minister. The question is about conflict of interest and its levels with this government. We have the Prime Minister who hired his fr friend to pay him $1,500 a day. That friend then hired Trudeau Liberals. He hired, he hired from the Trudeau Foundation Frank Iacobucci, he hired liberal insiders like Sheila Block, and now we have this rapporteur who's, who's taking the same communications advice as the member for Don Valley North is getting. It's conflict of interest after conflict of interest. Fire the rapporteur, call a public inquiry. Will they do it today? The Honourable Government House Leader. Speaker, in uh, 2007, when Mr. Johnson's integrity was called into question, uh, the leader of the official opposition said, this is a very qualified individual, and uh, frankly, I haven't heard anybody question his integrity. And I agree, Mr. Speaker, I'll take him back to 2007, when he was being questioned on how close Mr. Johnson was to the Conservative Party. The fact that he was appointed not once, not twice, but three times by Stephen Harper into that role, and that the, that the leader of the opposition stood up against the calls that he was was too close to the Conservatives. I don't understand how they could say that now and pretend now that he has no credibility. That has no credibility, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Miguel Clérable. Mr. Speaker, the special loyal Liberal rapporteur, David Johnson, hired Navigator to manage his current conflict interest crisis. Now, we've just learned that the member for Don Valley North also hired the Navigator, so the same company, for strategic advice. The result, the not-so-independent rapporteur exonerated the Liberal MP for Don Valley North despite serious allegations regarding his relations with Beijing. You just can't make this up, Mr. Speaker. It is time to end the farce. When will the Prime Minister finally launch a public and truly independent inquiry? The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives will continue with their personal attacks against Mr. Johnson despite the support that the latter received by the current leader of the official opposition. So we have to stop with this, this squabbling. We have to focus on the actual work at hand, the work that is protecting our democratic institutions. We have to work with Canadians, talk with Canadians, and that is exactly what we will do on this side of the House, the Government of Canada. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For Timmins, James Bay. Canada is on fire and cities across North America are suffering the smoke of this unprecedented ecological disaster. Now, this prime minister promised the world that Canada would finally get serious about capping our oil and gas emissions. But since then, the environment minister has allowed an increase in production of 109 million barrels a day. Meanwhile, big oil is racking up record profits, firing thousands of workers and switching to automation. So where is this cap on big oil and why won't this environment minister stand up for Canadian workers? and our fragile planet. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. We've been very clear that we are putting a cap on oil and gas emissions, but let's also talk about what we're doing to reduce combustion right across our entire economy. 
Just last year, we tabled an emissions reductions plan. It covers all sectors, and we are doing that work. We're moving to a sales target on zero emission vehicles. We're helping can Canadians to transition the fuels they use to heat their homes. We are going to make sure that we are there, and we are already seeing progress. The national inventory report that we put in with the UN showed that we are on track. We are already bending the curve on our emissions, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Victoria. Mr. Speaker, more than 400 wildfires are raging across Canada, forcing thousands to flee from their homes. And it's only June. The climate crisis is being felt in every corner of our country. And yet the Liberals continue to hand out billions in subsidies to the biggest polluters. Some of these tax breaks, including the accelerated investment incentive and the accelerated capital cost allowance for fossil fuels are set to expire, but oil and gas lobbyists are trying to get them extended. So will the Liberals stop listening to oil and gas executives and end these subsidies for good. The Honourable Minister of Natural Resources. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my honourable colleague for her question and her advocacy on this issue. As she is well aware, we have last year eliminated international fossil fuel subsidies. Canada and the UK are the two most advanced countries in the world who have tackled this international crisis, and we're on phase with phasing out domestic fossil fuel subsidies this year in 2023, two years earlier than all of our G20 countries' partners, Mr. Speaker. We're getting there, and we will get there faster than anyone else. The Honourable Member for Aurora, Oak Ridge's Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. June 1st marked the beginning of Pride season across Canada. We honoured the occasion today with the raising of the Pride flag and a celebratory drag brunch. It's a joyful time of year where we uplift the 2S LGBTQI plus community and it was disappointing that the official opposition was not well represented as we raised the pride flag, especially as we sadly recognize the rising tide of anti-2S LGBTQI plus hate and intolerance that is bringing to light a very real fear. Can the Minister of Women and Gender Equality share what our government is doing to protect the rights of this community, which is now more than ever in need of the support of all of us? Thank you. The Honourable Minister for Women and Gender Equality. Uh, thanks to the member for her question and for joining us this morning to raise the pride flag, Mr. Speaker. To all who came, thank you so much. Pride season is a time of celebration, but also reflection. Uh, we see the rising anti 2 LGBTQI plus hate, and it is causing real fear. That's why we responded with $1.5 million for security supports to Fierte Canada Pride for safer Pride festivals right across this country. To queer Canadians, we see you, we hear you, and we stand with you. Happy Pride, joyeuse Fierté. The Honourable Member for Kelowna Lake Country. Spending caused 40 year high inflation, which caused 22 year high interest rates, which will cause mortgage defaults. We have made in Canada inflation, and people can't afford this government. We need to stop fueling the inflationary fire, to stop interest rates from going up, to stop people from losing their homes. So, when will the, when will the Prime Minister stop his inflationary deficit spending? <laughs> The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think it's very important to reiterate that inflation is coming down. It was at a peak at 8.1%. It's now at 4.4%. It's projected to go down below 3%. But I think the other thing that we should say is we're focused on affordability. That's why we've lowered taxes for Canadians, not once but twice. We lowered taxes for small businesses. In fact, in this budget, we found a way to drop credit card fees 27%. That's going to save small businesses a billion dollars a year. Wow, that's that's the type of solutions we can build if we work together on the budget instead of filibustering it. Here. Yeah. The Honourable Member for Kelowna Lake Country. Well, Mr. Speaker, that Liberal member just doesn't get it. Their government refuses to take any responsibility for what they've done to affect the cost of living yeah. of Canadians. You know, for example, a local food bank in my community told me that they registered 294 new households in March alone, with the fastest growing demographic needing help being two parent working households. Inflationary deficits are crushing families' finances. So, when would this Prime Minister give people hope and the inflationary deficit spending so that Canadians can afford to stay in their homes? The Honourable Minister for Families. 
Mr. Speaker, it's important to be clear about what the government has spent money on. And when the Conservatives talk about those deficits, those deficits were spent on things like CERB, on things like the Canada Emergency Response Benefit or the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy, which quite literally kept households afloat during the sure, pandemic, yeah. Mr. Speaker. And when it comes to what we're spending on right now, it's things like the Canada Workers Benefit that's in this current budget that the Conservatives are delaying that will help the lowest income Canadians have more access to more money. Mr. Speaker, if the Conservatives truly cared about helping low income Canadians, they would support Bill C-47, they would vote with us and they would... The Honourable Member for Banff Airdrie. Well, with billions in new spending in the budget, the Liberals are driving up inflation and they're driving up the cost of living. And this has caused another increase in interest rates, which is going to cost thousands more for Canadians on their mortgages. Yet the Prime Minister has the audacity to try to claim that his budget is uninflationary. <laughs> well, you don't have to be a meteorologist to look outside and see it's raining. And you don't have to be an economist to know that this Liberal budget is driving up inflation. Yeah. So when will that government finally come up with a plan to balance the budget? Here, 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 here. The Honourable Minister for Housing. What we're doing is really delivering for Canadians. So I'll just read back to the Honourable Member what his colleagues believe. The member from Edmonton Riverbend believes we should download responsibility uh, to provinces and territories for housing. Same with the member from Mission Matkui Fraser Canyon. The member from uh, Calgary Senna believes in not supporting uh, density and actually opposes more density to build more housing supply. The member from Stormont Dunda South Glengarry believes we should pull back federal investments in housing. The member for Calgary Signal Hill believes that we, we don't even need the housing accelerator fund, and so on and so forth. The Honourable Member for Banff Airdrie. Let's listen to what some Liberals have to say. A former Liberal Finance Minister described this government's economic strategy as a bit like driving your car with one foot on the gas and the other on the brake. Yeah. Now some Canadians might want to go out and try that for themselves to really understand the metaphor. However, with the carbon tax driving up the price of gas, no one can afford to do burnouts anymore. <laughs> so if the Liberals won't listen to our advice and they won't listen to their own advice, will they at least listen to Canadians who are footing the bill for all their spending? <laughs> Seniors. Since 2015, we have been there supporting Canadians, including uh, seniors, Mr. Speaker. As the member opposite knows, Mr. Speaker, in April, millions of Canadians received the Climate Action Incentive Rebate, putting hundreds of dollars back uh, into their bank accounts, Mr. Speaker. But we didn't stop there, Mr. Speaker. This budget, which they're filibustering and uh, not making it pass through this House, Mr. Speaker, it has nine million Canadians, including seniors, that is going to help them with dental care, Mr. Speaker, through our new Canadian dental care plan. 11 million Canadians that will receive, Mr. Speaker, a new grocery re rebate. On this side of the House, Mr. Speaker, we're going to continue yeah. to make sure Good. Canadians That's have the supports that they need, uh, that they need Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Trois-Rivières. Mr. Speaker, let's take a step back. There is foreign interference in our election system. Around a dozen ridings have been targeted. The former leader of the opposition was targeted, as well as at least two other members. Mr. Speaker, that's extremely serious. This House itself, this very House, is being targeted, as well as the legitimacy and integrity of members. That is why this House is continuing to ask for a public inquiry. What is the government waiting for? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, the short answer is nothing, because from the very beginning, we have taken concrete action. We have created new powers for the national security establishment. We increased the amount of transparency with the creation of ENSICOP and NCIRA. And now, we have a recommendation for next steps by J David Johnson, a distinguished Canadian about the next stages that we can take to better protect our democratic institutions, and that's what we're focusing on. The Honourable Member for Laurentie Labelle. Mr. Speaker, this government is constantly saying that the opposition parties are showing partisanship on this matter, but we are asking for a public and independent inquiry exactly for that reason, to keep partisanship far from the matter. And yet the Liberals have appointed a rapporteur who is only accountable to the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives, the Black Québécois, the NDP, all of the communities that have been interfered with by China. 
the former chief electoral officer, Jean-Pierre Kingsley, and even former liberals like Gerald Butts, they're all asking for a public inquiry. So who's really being partisan here? The Honorable Minister. Mr. Speaker, we are accusing the opposition of making partisan attacks on Mr. Johnston because that's exactly what they've been doing for months. For several months, the opposition, especially the conservatives, have been continuing to engage in personal attacks against Mr. Johnston, despite his long years of service. Now, the opposition should change its ways, work together, accept the briefing, and better protect our democratic institutions and all Canadians. Yes, the Honourable Member for Calgary, Rocky Ridge. Mr. Speaker, massive deficits cause inflation. Inflation causes rate hikes. Rate hikes make mortgage payments unaffordable. Unaffordable payments lead to mortgage defaults. But there is a solution. This government could stop the deficits, right. stop inflation, stop rate hikes, and prevent defaults. Even the finance minister agreed with this basic advice a few short months ago. So when will the prime minister end his inflationary deficit spending? Good question. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, as I already described, inflation is coming down in Canada. And despite the fact that it's coming down, it's actually below inflation in the United States. Uh, inflation in Europe, inflation in the OECD. That's what's allowing us to invest in making life more affordable. I remember when I was door knocking last summer that my constituents would tell me that their childcare costs was as much as a mortgage payment. But now that we've reduced those costs by half and we're going to continue to reduce them to $10 a day, they're not saying that anymore. The Honourable Member for Calgary, Rocky Ridge. Well, Mr. Speaker, the latest interest rate hike is having a devastating effect on Canadian homeowners and home buyers. Half of homeowners say that their, their mortgage is already barely affordable now, and shocking higher payments are only one renewal away. Rate hikes are also crushing the dreams of new home buyers and threatening to collapse transactions that are currently in progress. When will the Prime Minister take the former Liberal Finance Minister John Manley's advice and take his foot off the inflationary gas pedal and rein in his deficits? Yeah, when? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. What I appreciate about that member opposite's question is that he's concerned about the welfare of Canadians. On that, we share a commonality. What we would link the welfare of Canadians to is to the small biz businesses that really run our economy. Each time on this side of the House, we put forward policies, proposals, or directives that would assist those small businesses, the party opposite has voted against them. Whether there's lowering the small business taxes, whether that's the SEVA supports and rent subsidy supports we put in place to assist our small businesses. Now, before this very chamber, we have a support that's in place that will reduce credit credit card fees for small businesses from, from 27 much, percent, much lower, much lower to what they are right now, and that is being opposed by the party opposite. The Honourable Member for Calgary Shepherd. Four times, four times Conservative MPs on the Immigration Committee called for action to help international students that were victims of a fake college admission letter scam. And four times the Liberal, liberal NDP MPs on the committee voted against. Malicious consultants profited tens of thousands of dollars off each and every student, promising them a new life in Canada, and then stuck them with a fake college admission letter that the Immigration Department didn't catch. Hundreds of international students are now protesting at CBSA offices. These students finished their studies. They worked hard. They obeyed the law. How could this incompetent Liberal government allow hundreds of international students to be defrauded. Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary of the Minister of Immigration. Um, Mr. Speaker, I thank the member for his question because I think we collectively agree that this is uh, unacceptable. And we are seized with this situation that these international students are facing. Our focus is to make sure that we actually identify the perpetrator of fraud and prevent them from abusing anyone again. But at the same time, we do recognize that there may be students in this court, Mr. Speaker, who are vulnerable, who we're taking advantage of. There's an opportunity to present their case, and we will be there with them. The Honorable Member for Dorval, Lachine Lassalle. Mr. Speaker, according to the Mayor of Lévis, Gilles Louyer, Including the Davy Shipyard in the National Shipbuilding Strategy marks the beginning of the biggest economic ecosystem of the last 50 years in Levy. Can the Minister of Public Services and Procurement tell us more about the economic benefits of this recent inclusion for the region of Levy and more broadly the entire country? Thank you. 
The Honorable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank my colleague for Dorval Lachine Lassalle for her important question. This historic investment for Davy Shipyard is an excellent piece of news for Quebec and all of Canada. It will lead to $21 billion in economic benefits in several sectors, and it will support more than 4,000 jobs. Together, we will rebuild Canada's maritime industry. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Regina Louvain. The Prime Minister and his Spandy P junior partners have caused a problem. Their massive inflationary budgets have caused rate height increases, which cause mortgage increases, which cause defaults on homes for Canadians. We have the solution, Mr. Speaker. The solution is stop the deficits, stop the inflation, stop the interest rate heights from going up, and then stop the defaults on homes. Mr. Speaker, simple question. When will this Prime Minister stop his inflationary deficit spending? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. President, au moment où les feux de... Mr. Speaker, at a time when forest fires are ravaging Quebec and parts of the rest of the country, the Conservatives' priority was to filibuster our bill to implement the budget. It's very clear that the Conservatives' plan is austerity. But, Mr. Speaker, we have been equally clear. Our government will never abandon the fight against climate change, and we will also ensure that we are there for future generations. For Regina Louvain. What a ridiculous response, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. Canadians are paying the price for this Prime Minister's addiction to spending. Mm -hmm. These Liberals are telling Canadians they've never had it so good. One in five Canadians are skipping meals. Eight million Canadians are visiting a food bank because there's more month than paycheck always left over, Mr. Speaker. The simple question is, if these Liberals are doing so good, why don't Canadians have more money in their pockets? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Families. Contrary to the Conservatives, when we see Canadians struggling, we say, you know what, let's figure out a way to help them. The Conservatives say, let's do nothing and sit on our hands. But we've actually put forward several initiatives to help Canadians, whether that's the increase to the Canada workers' benefit, whether it's the doubling of the GST tax credit, whether it's the grocery rebate that as of July 5th, 11 million Canadians are going to get, or the Canada dental benefit that's going to help millions of Canadians access dental care for the first time. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives have an opportunity right after question period to support our Budget Implementation Act, help Canadians, and make sure that we move forward together. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Right. The Honourable Member for Prince George, Peace River, Northern Rockies. Families in Nunavut are waking up to a financial nightmare. The Prime Minister's out-of-control spending is causing inflation and mortgage rates are skyrocketing. An average mortgage payment for a home in Iqaluit went from $3,100 in 2016 to a whopping $4,667 today. That's a $1,500 per month rise in the last seven years. And sadly, many families in Nunavut are going to lose their homes. When will this Prime Minister end his out-of-control inflationary spending? When? The Honourable Minister for Northern Development. Mr. Speaker, our government understands the needs of Northerners and people who live, uh, and Canadians. That's why we've introduced the grocery rebate for, for all of Canada. That's why, in terms of food security, I've introduced $163 million of new money for Nutrition North. Mr. Speaker, that's why we introduced $10 a day daycare, which the member voted against. And that's why we brought in the Canada Child Benefit, which has lifted 450,000 kids out of poverty, which the member voted against. The member for St. John's East. Today is World Oceans Day, and it's a moment to think about the critical role healthy and abundant oceans play in the fight against climate change. Can the Minister of Fisheries, Oceans and Canadian Coast Guard please inform the House on our government's progress towards our ambitious goal of protecting 30 percent of our oceans by 2025? The Honourable Minister for Fisheries and Oceans. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the member for St. John's East for her question and for her tireless advocacy for oceans and fisheries. In 2015, less than 1 percent of Canada's oceans were protected. Today, we're protecting close to 15 percent, and we're actually on track to protect 25 percent by 2025 and 30 percent by 2030 by working closely with Indigenous peoples. 
healthy oceans support prosperous coastal communities and are a very important heat and carbon sink. So we're taking action to protect the oceans and the planet. Happy the Honourable Member for Esquimalt, Senate Shuk. Mr. Speaker, exclusionary policies that ban trans women and girls from sports are cruel human rights violations. There is no credible scientific evidence to support these bans. The real threat to women's sports is not trans women, it's systemic and discriminatory underfunding of women's sports. Yeah. Human rights protections are only meaningful when the government takes a stand in defense of rights and against discrimination. My question is, what is the Minister of Sport doing to bring an end to trans-exclusionary policies at organizations like Swim Canada? The Honourable Minister for Sports. I'd like to thank my colleague for his question. Our government will always defend human rights, including the rights of the trans community. And today, as we raise the pride flag, unfortunately, the Conservative leader was not there to support the community. However, that said, I will continue to work with all partners in the sports community so that together we ensure that the rights of women, the rights of trans people and all communities be respected in competition, whether locally or internationally. The Honourable Member for Kitchener Centre. Mr. Speaker, our country is on fire. The climate emergency is all around us. And instead of serious action, the Conservatives' tone-deaf efforts to repeal the carbon tax on one side and the Liberals giving our money to the very sector the oil and gas industry most responsible for it. What we need now is action, not more loans for the trans mountain pipeline. Will the government get serious and end all subsidies to the oil and gas industry today? The Honourable Minister of the Environment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Honourable Colleague for his question. I have good news for him. EDC well, went in 2018 from $12.5 billion in international fossil fuel subsidies to less than $400 million in last July. This will get to zero this year, Mr. Speaker. Here, here. These are international fossil fuel subsidies. We will also eliminate all domestic fossil fuel subsidies in 2023, two years earlier than all of our G20 partners. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for questions and uh, answers today. The Honourable Member for Calgary Shepherd is rising on a point of order. Mr. Speaker, I believe if you seek it, you will find.